Rejoining the colony, we find Ra finishing off the first wall to what would be the central point of our little colony. Though he does need his recreation, and he seems to favour the walks and stargazing rather than playing with the uh, wooden uh, horseshoes point. But this can be improved, and we'll have it moved to the middle of the little forest so he can get his looked at trees benefit for the day. As evening falls, we might even have our first colony member, though it's a rather unusual one, yes. Due to our ideology, we have the option of dryads, and this seems to be one of its seeds. Curiously, it seems like the cold snap has also taken another victim. This small hedgehog died of hyperthermia. Thankfully, Ra doesn't have to worry about such things, but it's something to be aware of for any guests or visitors. It seems, though, we needn't have worried. The building is nearly complete when, as dawn breaks, we're informed the cold snap has finally ended. So it's time for Ra to take a break from the building and start sowing all those seeds again. While for the colony, cotton and fibre corn are the most important things right now, I thought I'd vary the food a little bit by adding carrots. The description says they increase sight, but uh, I'm not so sure about that. But if it's uh, food they can be mixed together and we can make some simple meals out of it, it's all fine. The next step was more varied recreation. So sparing some of our precious wood, I decided to add a chess set so Ra could uh, train his mental capacities and potentially play it with any guests that arrive. There was also a job that had been delayed due to our aggressive visitors and that was gathering several of these tables that were scattered along the map. Whilst they were quite handy for any visitors, the main reason to use them was for just breaking down for resources and it would be much better just to do that much closer to home. As usual though, as soon as Ra ventured away, we had visitors. Though this time they were a lot more friendly, but ultimately a little dull. We couldn't trade with them and they were not really interested in talking with us. Perhaps they'd wander by, but uh, there wasn't really much we could do to interact. They did, however, bring notice to a corpse that had been laying in the river, which we'd missed. Yes, Ra was going to be burying yet more people, this time not dead by his hand. While we weren't getting much human companionship, local wildlife seems to be making up for it. Yes, repair and rescue seems to be uh, quite favoured by the uh, little beaver family that uh, had set up nearby, and they often spent their time hanging around where he was or sleeping right next to him. Unusual for an untamed creature. As dawn rolled around and the main room was complete, it was time to think of how we were going to power things. As one of the few people with access to electricity, something I hadn't had expected when I'd set this up, I had to think how to actually go about this. We were lacking components and we could not make more of them. We might be able to find a few in trade, but they will be rare. So, with this large chem fuel pool right next to us, it only seemed right to make use of it. I never used these pools before, so I don't know exactly how to. Hopefully the technology was not something that was banned, and if it was, I had a small rule that once I'd researched all the texts of an era, then I'd be allowed to move on to the next one. Meaning that eventually, we'd be able to use this and there was nothing stopping Ra, apart from his low handling skill, from obtaining some boomalope in the meantime. But first things first, chem fuel was incredibly volatile, so it was best to make this place made entirely out of stone and cut off from where it could spread and burn down other areas of the base. Finally complete, but with no obvious way to extract the chem fuel, it was time to start working on plan B. Some hay grass here would be good for animals and for other items around the base. It would only be a small pen, perhaps only enough for one or two animals, but it would have to do for now and would probably be a good way to start given my tendency to overexpand in many cases. Though it was looking increasingly likely that I'd just have to take the debuff and chop down many, many trees soon. It's not something I wanted to do, but there wasn't much choice as the area that I'd cleared previously had already got a new sprouting trees much faster than I'd realised. 
even as I was starting to complete the planning, it seems like we got a quest offer. Forced weather. Fog for 15 days. Now, the rewards weren't amazing, though the gun was tempting. But Honor and Hyperweave seemed to be the best. I mean, there wasn't enough Hyperweave to be worthwhile, but the Honor would help. The only thing that would be dangerous about this quest would be the once more slowing of our crop. With the weather just... Well, reducing the growth speed. Thankfully with this quest the rewards arrive right away. Which meant after being stored we could focus on finishing the little barn. And I was not joking when I said little, this was going to be tiny in the meantime. So after expanding the farm a little further and improving Ra's plant skill it was time to work on something else. Specifically, the planting and health of our dryad. Now, the tree itself is relatively interesting. If this thing dies, the dryad dies, so we have to protect it, and I'm a little nervous with it being out here. The beavers seem to have gone and made dams and hidden away, so they shouldn't be eating it, fingers crossed. Defending it will be a bit of a problem overall, as we can't build near it. But it might be the Dryads won't even help us for some time because we might have to do the unification ritual before they technically join our colony and Ra does not have the abilities to do that. But I'm planning on looking after them and I want to see what these immature Dryads look like. I bet they're pretty cute. With space at a premium I've decided to get rid of the gas geysers. Now. These could have been useful as an alternative power source, but they require the same technology as extracting the chem fuel pond. And they were an energy source I've never played around with, so I was going to leave them for now. But after all this building, our supply of bricks has finally run out. Meaning that we're going to have to start carving granite ourselves. Ra doesn't tire and can keep doing it for a long time, but it's hardly interesting to watch. But it needs to be done. Wood 2 had also finally run out, but thankfully the fibre corn was almost ready. Even with the extra practice though, Ra kept botching quite a bit of the harvest, and then I realised something else. Each of these fibre corn only gave two wood, which was really not enough for the effort that needed to be put in. Indeed, this would not supply the colony with enough wood, even in the short term. So all we could do was to expand the grow zone and take our meagre 10 wood harvest. Which was enough at least to finish the pen. With no cotton, thankfully there was alternatives nearby. It seems the giant spiders have been busy. Giving us plenty of silk to haul and steal. I do like this spider silk for it's some of the best material in the game. Though, due to being several spider silks in the game, it's a little difficult to tell which one is which when you're trying to make things. Other supplies included free range eggs from the wandering geese, and it looked like my uh, plan to harvest some chem fuel from the local wildlife wasn't going to be an issue either. The biggest issues I'd face is the time it would take Ra to collect all this, and to also bury the other bodies I'd just noticed we'd left out and about. This time expenditure would not be helped though by Ra accidentally standing in a web. It only stunned him, thankfully, and the spiders were content to ignore him, which is most fortunate. Perhaps he was too big a prey. From one spider to another, Spider, the high chief of one of the local tribes, wanted us to slay a Fenra. Now, we aren't really hunters, so I just wanted to give this a pass. I didn't really feel it was very in character for Ra, though if it comes up again I'll probably give it a try. With dawn there was more supply gathering as our harvest was finally done. Yes, it had been a while but we'd finally gotten some rice and hopefully the beginnings of potentially making some pemmican and stockpiling that for future colonists. Though Ra was still botching the occasional harvest, with over five implants hopefully he'd soon reach the eight that we needed for herbal medicine. It was growing wild but it'd be nice to have a supply for trade and also just for emergencies before winter set in. But as usual we couldn't have any peace. As soon as it seemed like we'd finished all the gathering, yet another attacker turned up. 
And he wasn't one I'd like to keep either. I mean, he might be useful in training some medical skill if he went down, but honestly, blood loss and xenophobe, this man was possibly here on just a personal crusade out of sheer hatred. However, the hateful moron did allow Ra to get up to shooting level 3. This was something I was going to have to level as well, never mind the more benign skills. It was obvious that Ra still couldn't really hit the broadside of a barn. Thankfully, his rather fast running speed meant he could get away from trouble quite easily. But sooner or later, I think he was going to get caught or ambushed somewhere. But that wouldn't be in this encounter. And like with everything else Ra does, after far too long, the attacker was disposed of. And buried, of course. Because, as said before, we aren't savages here. With an ever-pressing need to expand our storage, that was the next thing to do, and achieved a little achievement in the process. I didn't really get the chance to look which one it was, but I'll have to check later. Thankfully, Ra was still taking his time to have a break now and again. Recreation was actually one of the biggest issues, since the hard-working droid would often, well, not look after himself so well, though his mood was still pretty high. But, uh, again, Tree's Harmed was going to keep building. So, taking advantage of this quiet time on the rim, it was time to get a few more blocks made. Those blocks, though, were almost immediately spent on a new project. What it is, I'll let you guys try and guess. But it was something long overdue, and hopefully this full design will work. Again, I feel it's too small, but confined by the trees as I am. Well, it will have to do for now. And with that, I hope to see you again on the rim. I will catch you next time. But before I go, I just want to say thank you again to all the watchers. And words of advice are always welcome.